We, um, <clears throat> I mean human beings, have been evolving for 6 million years, but we're still not perfect. Turns out that our bodies have a bunch of design flaws. First of all, human eyes have tiny blind spots, never mind the philosophical ones. Such a spot is about the size of a pinhead. It's located at the point where the optic nerve passes through the surface of the retina at the back of the eye. Your optic nerves connect your eyes to the brain. They carry images for your brain to process. This is how you see. In the spot where these nerves leave your eye, though, there's a lack of something called photoreceptors. These receptors detect light and are the reason you can see. Without them, your eyes wouldn't be able to send any signals to your brain to describe what you're looking at. But because there are no photoreceptors there, you've got a tiny blind spot in each of your eyes. If people were designed perfectly without this flaw, they'd have eyes just like octopuses. It may sound weird, but the eyes of these creatures are eerily similar to humans. But their optic nerves run behind the retina. This means that the nerves don't have to leave the eye at any point. So there's no gap that causes the blind spot in human eyes. What else? Around 65 million Americans complained about having issues with their back. And this is because of evolution. Just like dogs, humans used to walk on all fours. When people were walking on their hands and knees, the curve of their spine was pretty much perfect, and all their organs felt comfortable. Because of this, there was never any pressure on their backs. Well, we evolved to start walking on two legs to save energy. The search for food took longer and longer, and when walking on two legs, people saved 25% of energy. But this was bad news for people's backs. Because this way, their spines were basically forced to turn into a column to support all the weight and make space for other organs. But if your spine was completely straight, you wouldn't be able to walk on two legs. So it evolved to become curved. But this puts a big amount of pressure on your lower back. So basically, to get rid of our pesky back problems, you should start walking on all fours again. Yeah, that'll work. Make no bones about it, people have too many bones in their feet. We have all these bones because our ape-like ancestors needed them to grab onto tree branches. Now, people aren't swinging from trees anymore, but we still have all those bones, which makes us prone to damaging them. And this can be extremely uncomfortable. Think about how many times you've stubbed your toes. If we were designed perfectly, our feet would look like those of an ostrich. These birds have way fewer bones. And the parts that look like knees turned backwards are actually their ankle joints. This makes ostriches less prone to injuries and also helps them run fast. Wow, if people were designed this way, it would make the Olympics way more interesting. I'd sure watch. Now, chew on this one. Human teeth are also far from perfect. People spend so much money on preserving them. At the same time, no other animal has to visit a dentist as we do. Also, once our teeth are permanently damaged or fall out, we can't grow new ones. Sharks are the opposite. They have an endless supply of teeth. In some shark species, a new set of teeth develops every two weeks. Kangaroos also have way better teeth than people do. If we were designed perfectly, we'd probably have the same teeth as our bouncing buddies. Once their teeth wear down, they fall out, and their rear teeth migrate forward. That's not the only issue we have with our teeth. Our mouths are way too crowded. Hey, I normally have a foot in mine. In the process of evolution, the human brain grew dramatically, and our jaws had to become wider and shorter to make room for it. But this left almost no room for our wisdom teeth. In the past, wisdom teeth were helpful when people needed to break down food. But as we learned to cook and process food, these teeth weren't needed anymore. So, in short, people should just get rid of them completely. And this may actually be happening. Around 25% of people, mostly Eskimos, are now born without some or all of their four wisdom teeth. Now, it happens that our knees are quite impractical too. It's the most complex joint in the body. It's sandwiched between two massive levers, which is already pretty risky. The knee only moves forward or backward, which doesn't make it a very secure construction. That's why there's a bunch of rules in many kinds of sports, like soccer or rugby, that forbid hitting an opponent's knee from the side. To make people better suited to their new sporty lifestyle, the hinge-like mechanism of the knee could be replaced with a ball and socket. This would be like the structure you have in your shoulders and hips. 
Friends, Romans, countrymen, waggle your ears. Yep, like dogs and cats, some humans can waggle their ears. These lucky ones can move their ears independently, thanks to special muscles called extrinsic ear muscles. But those serve literally no purpose, apart from providing a cool party trick. Speaking of design flaws, human voice boxes are in the completely wrong place. Your windpipe, thanks to which you can breathe, and your food pipe, which is, you guessed it, where the food goes, open into the same space. This space extends from your nose and mouth down to your voice box. You have a little leaf-shaped flap that covers the opening to your voice box whenever you swallow. It prevents food from going into your windpipe. But this mechanism isn't always fast enough. If you're talking while eating, it's incredibly easy for the food to slip down and accidentally go into your airway. And you definitely don't want that. The whale's voice box is designed much more wisely. It's located in its blowhole, away from its mouth. If people could move their voice box into their nose, they would have two separate tubes, and there would be no risk of choking. <laughs> but there would be a downside. We wouldn't be able to talk. But we could communicate through singing instead, like our whale friends. We'd be able to do this by producing vibrations in our noses, kinda like this. Don't I sound better? Hey, leave me a comment below. You like ribs? I love them. But we're not talking about those kind of ribs. Some of us humans have an extra 13th set of ribs. Between 1 and 3% of the world's population have these ribs, called cervical, and they serve absolutely no purpose. Some people have just one of such ribs on the left side or the right side of their body. And others have cervical ribs on both sides. Now, you don't really need your appendix. It may contain some useful bacteria to help when you have stomach issues, but apart from that, it's not really necessary. The worst thing is that the appendix can get easily inflamed. The appendix was originally designed to help people digest cellulose, which is found in most green plants. This was back when people's diet mainly consisted of plants and almost no animal food. So, I say, let's get rid of it. Moving on. Blood is delivered from your heart to all the tissues of your body through thin pipes called arteries. The blood flows into each of your arms and legs through one large artery. For your arms, this artery is located at the biceps, and for your legs, it's in the front of the thigh. But your back needs blood too. And still, instead of having a large artery at the back of your body, you have smaller ones branching out and bundling around your bones and nerves. This is really impractical and makes people pretty susceptible to glitches, which is why you often get numb arms or legs. Bummer. How about something humorous? Take a look at your elbow. There, a branch of the artery meets up with something called the ulnar nerve. Thanks to this, you can move your pinky fingers. This is also why, when you bang your funny or humorous bone, your arm goes all numb and tingly. Ow. To fix this, we really need one more large artery in the back of our body near the shoulder blades. This extra pipe would provide the blood with a more direct route. This would also stop your arms and legs from going numb when you bump them in the wrong place. Finally, there's this tail. People still have a tailbone, even though there's no tail in sight. For our ape-like ancestors, the tail was incredibly helpful. They used it to balance themselves while jumping from one high branch to another. Now that we live in actual houses, most of us don't swing through trees anymore. The tailbone, whose official name is the coccyx, is easily fractured. So currently, it's just a design flaw. Researchers also claim that removing it would improve posture issues too. <laughs>